Tim and Johnny have told you that there is a beautiful new refined design for iPhone 7. It starts with this new finish we call Jet Black. It is absolutely stunning. It is a high gloss finish. So it's a seamless surface between the glass and the aluminum back all around. It is a stainless steel Apple logo. The new integrated antennas are built so subtly you can barely see them at all anymore. And of course the enclosure creates the housing for the camera. It is a beautiful new design. There's a second new black. We call it simply black. <laughs> it is bead blasted aluminum. It diffuses light. It is a black logo and it looks very cool, very high tech. Well, the new iPhone 7 also looks beautiful in gold and in silver and, of course, rose gold. <laughs> Number two, something we use hundreds of times a day, the home button. The home button is quintessential Apple design. It is so simple yet so powerful. We use it throughout our day. We click it to go home. We double click it to bring in multitasking. We hold it down to invoke Siri. We can program it through accessibility. You can put your finger on it and read your fingerprint with Touch ID. You can double tap it to bring the screen down in reachability. And of course, hold it near a terminal to pay with Apple Pay. It does so many things for us. And we've completely redesigned it to make it more responsive, more reliable, and even customizable in iPhone 7. Now, we've done this before. We've changed our input devices in big ways. You may remember with the iPod, it started with a mechanical click wheel, and then we updated it to an electrostatic wheel, and it was so much better. We've done it recently with the MacBook and MacBook Pro. We've brought out the Force Touch trackpad, and it's the best trackpad we've ever had in a notebook. And we're doing this with the home button. We've re-engineered it. It's now force sensitive, solid state. It works together in combination with a new generation Taptic engine. And this Taptic engine is more responsive, puts out a wider range of frequencies, and it creates in real time an incredible feel with the new home button. In fact, it's so useful, we use it throughout the user experience. So if you do a quick action like moving a widget, it gives you a nice Taptic feedback. There's unique feedbacks for notifications and messages and even your ringtones. And it's amazing because it can be programmed by third-party applications, and the applications that have started to work on iPhone 7, taking advantage of this Taptic engine, are creating new feelings and experiences that could not have been created before in a smartphone. It's really incredible. Number three, the new enclosure in iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus are water and dust resistant. Now, it's incredibly important to the team to ensure that we protect the great feeling and experience that we all love about our iPhones with the buttons and switches. And to do that and provide this resistance meant re-engineering it from the inside out in many ways, including new seals and new adhesives. And in our tests, it is IP67 protection standard. What does this mean for all of us? Well, even the least coordinated among of us don't have to worry in case some unusual mishap happens that your iPhone will be safe from water or dust. <laughs> Number four, let's talk about the camera. The camera is perhaps the most beloved feature by many of us in our iPhones, and customers take absolutely stunning photographs. You can see them around the world in the Shot on iPhone campaign. They are amazing, and they send us them every single day, more pictures to be included in that campaign, because it is an incredible camera. And just wait till they get their hands on the new camera system in the iPhone 7. It is a huge advancement in photography for cell phones. Everything about it is entirely new. There's an optical image stabilizer in all iPhones, 7 and 7 Plus. It helps steady from shaking hands. There's a wider f1.8 aperture lens that lets 50% more light onto the sensor. There is a new six element lens so you can get a sharp image edge to edge without 1.8 aperture. 
and there's an all-new 12 megapixel sensor. It has large pixels, it's 60% faster, and 30% more energy efficient. Even the flash is all new. Our True Tone flash in the same aperture now has four LEDs. It puts out 50% more light, reaches 50% further, and the engineering team has come up with this really cool feature, a flicker sensor. What does that do? Well, the flicker sensor reads the flickering of artificial lighting and can compensate for it in the photos and videos you take. This is really, really big in terms of image quality. But behind it all is the brains of the camera, the image signal processor. And this enables so much of the unique quality that we get in our pictures we take with iPhone. And the ISP and the new chip in the iPhone 7 has twice the throughput of previous versions. What does this ISP do? Well, I'm going to take you a quick walk through some of the things the ISP does every time we take a picture. It's unbelievable. But the first thing it does is it reads the scene and uses machine learning to look for objects and people and bodies within it. Then it automatically sets exposure sets focus using our focus pixels, sets the color with white balance. In fact, for the first time, captures wide color, cinema standard wide color. It balances it off with tone mapping. It does noise reduction. And even if it needs to, it can take multiple photos and fuse them together into one to give you the perfect image. This happens every time we take a picture. In fact, the ISP is so smart, it is performing 100 billion operations every time we take a picture. And it does it in just 25 milliseconds. This truly is a supercomputer for photos. Well, what matters most is the pictures you can take with the iPhone 7. So of course, we've given iPhone 7s to a number of great photographers and asked them to show us what's possible directly with this incredible camera. And they were so blown away. I want to use one quote uh, of what photographers had to say about this. Christopher Anderson said, this iPhone is going to be a part of any professional's repertoire of tools. The camera didn't just handle low light, it rendered the separation of colors in a way that reminds me of film just beautiful. That is remarkable praise from a great photographer. So I'm going to show you a few pictures that he and some other photographers took directly from iPhone 7, and these have not been retouched in any way. So here's one. This is an absolutely beautiful photograph. It's a high-speed camera. He's not floating there. It shows just how great it is and how sharp the focus. It takes incredible pictures, whether you're using black and white or color. And the colors, because we capture wide color gamut images now, are much richer, particularly in the greens and some of the reds. Unfortunately, from the slide machine up to this projection system, you don't get the full breadth of the gamut of wide colors. So what you're seeing here, as beautiful it is, isn't as beautiful as it actually is in the photo, and you can see it on your iPhone. And here's an example of low light photography. So much improved, it's really great. So customers are gonna love taking pictures with iPhone 7. They're also gonna love taking live photos. They're already fun and they've gotten even better with iPhone 7. Now we apply video image stabilization. When you take a live photo, you can edit them after you shot them, like crop them or apply filters. And developers can capture and edit live photos within their applications with iOS 10. Developers are really excited that in iOS 10, you can now capture raw DNG files directly from the camera sensor and do even more complex editing. And for the first time with iPhone 7, they can also get wide color in their photos that they take as well. So this is the best camera we've ever made on any iPhone. We also have the best camera we've ever had on the front side as well. There's a new 7 megapixel FaceTime HD camera for those selfies and those FaceTime calls we make. This is up from five megapixels. The sensor includes new pixel technologies that we've used on the backside, like deep trench isolation. If you remember what that is, it helps us get sharper images as the pixels get close together. It also captures wide color images. So throughout the system, we're applying wide color and does auto image stabilization. So this shot that you see up here on the screen, that was taken from the front side camera, unedited exactly as it can take a beautiful selfie. So this is the iPhone 7 camera. New 12 megapixel camera system with optical image stabilization, wider f1.8 aperture, six elements in the lens, that sensor's 60% faster, now a quad LED true tone flash, our incredibly fast ISP, and wide color capture. 
It is the best camera ever in an iPhone. So. If you can't tell, I love cameras. I love them. And this has got me so excited because if that is the best camera we've ever made in an iPhone, what is left for iPhone 7? And this is what we're doing on iPhone 7 Plus. It's plus a second camera. There's now two 12 megapixel cameras built in the iPhone 7 Plus. One has the wide angle, 28 millimeter lens, the same as the iPhone 7. The other is a telephoto, 56 millimeter lens. Well, why have two complete cameras with two lenses? Well, to explain it, let me show you a traditional point and shoot or DSLR and how the lens can work. As you know, and we have many of these cameras in our lives, you can change the focal length of your lens to zoom in. That's how we get a zoom feature. And that works great when you have a large camera with a big lens on it that you can move in and out. That isn't so great on the lens you want to put in something that goes in your pocket or your purse. So we know with two cameras and two different lenses, we can create a zoom feature built in to the iPhone. It takes an incredible amount of hardware and software to do it in a way that we can all enjoy, and the team has done something remarkable. So how does it work? The same as before. You go into the camera app to take a picture. But now, there's a new button right there on the screen. Let me blow it up a teeny bit. It says 1x. It's right above the shutter. And when you go to take a picture, it's using the wide-angle lens and taking a picture just as always. But now with this button, you can do one of two things. First, you can just tap it, and it jumps to 2x. Now you're taking a picture with a telephoto lens. You're getting the same high-quality 12-megapixel picture with a beautiful optical lens, no software needed. The second thing you can do is you can put your finger on it and drag across it, and you can zoom from 1x to 5x. And as you go beyond 2x, you're doing software zoom. But now, since it's starting with that telephoto lens, the quality of that image is four times better than before with software zoom. In fact, it's so much better, we decided to push it even further all the way up to 10x. So now... Yeah. So as you see here, now with iPhone 7 Plus, you can go from 1x to 10x. Optical zoom at 2x, and great software zoom after that. Here's an example of two photos side by side. The one on the left taken at 1x, the one on the right at 2x. Both with beautiful optical lens quality. Both are great examples of taking low light pictures now with incredible new cameras in iPhone 7 Plus. So that's the camera in iPhone 7 Plus, joining iPhone 7 with this great new zoom feature. There's one other use of this camera that we challenge our engineering team to do as an extra credit project. It's re <laughs> it really was. It's something that is incredibly challenging and takes a lot of amazing invention. But what they've been doing is astounding. And it's something that's a big breakthrough in photography. And we want to give you a sneak peek of this feature. Now, to explain it, I'm going to bring up a picture. This is a picture that was taken with a very high-end camera. And so it will help us illustrate the feature we're trying to achieve. So let me bring up a picture. You see in this beautiful portrait, the gentleman in the front is pin sharp in focus. And that background has a beautiful blur. This is called shallow depth of field. This is a technique that's really useful for things like portraiture. And it's something that is illustrative of a great camera that has often a very big sensor, like a full frame sensor, or a really big, fast lens. And the quality of that background blur, that's what's called bokeh. And the higher the quality of the bokeh, usually the more advanced and higher quality the lens and camera system. And the, the ending result is it feels almost 3D, like the person's popping off the screen. It is a beautiful photo. So our goal is to try to do something like this using the two cameras in the iPhone 7 Plus. And what the engineering team has been doing, hardware and software working together, is truly remarkable. What they're able to do is when we take a picture is to use the ISP to scan the scene, to use machine learning to recognize people and faces, and then create a depth map of that image from the two cameras and the software. Keep the people in the front sharp and focused and apply a beautiful blur to the background. This is a huge breakthrough in what can be done 
a smartphone in photography. So how do you do it? Well, it couldn't be easier. Again, we go to the camera app, you go to take a picture, where you normally select the style of the picture, so panorama or square, there's a new style that says portrait. You select portrait, it automatically jumps to using the telephoto lens, because that 56 millimeter lens is great for portrait lens, and automatically you see the depth effect. Now what's remarkable is that before you take a picture, as you're looking at your iPhone screen, you are seeing that blur in the background. It is being generated in real time as you're looking at your screen. Even high-end DSLRs can't do real-time deep depth preview in their screens. This is an incredible breakthrough. So now I'm gonna show you the first picture we've ever shown the world of a depth of field photo taken from an iPhone 7 Plus with this new feature. Before I do, I have to have come clean on something because I wasn't entirely honest before. The picture I showed you before, this was taken on an iPhone 7 Plus. It is stunning. Again, we've given some photographers early access to a 7 Plus and this software feature and they've been blown away by how it performs. Let me just give you one quote from, from a photographer. Jason Aceto said, I loved the depth of field capabilities and the ability to shoot fast without losing sharpness. This iPhone proves you don't need a five-figure rig to get a great photographer. This camera is gonna change the game. Now, we are not saying to throw out your DSLRs and that iPhone replaces all the DSLRs. What we are saying is this is the best camera we have ever made in an iPhone. This is the best camera ever made in any smartphone. For many of the customers who have it, it'll probably be the best camera they've ever owned to date. But more importantly, it allows them to create beautiful pictures with incredible creative tools. So let me show you two more examples taken from the iPhone 7 Plus with its depth of field. Here's another photo. That's absolutely beautiful. One more. It is an incredible tool. It's not for every style of picture you're gonna take, but for the ones you wanna use it on, it's a pretty big breakthrough. So how will iPhone 7 Plus users get this great feature? Well, simple. It will be a free software update later this year to all iPhone 7 Plus users. So that's the camera. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the Retina HD display. The Retina HD display is the best display on any smartphone. And an iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, they get even better. They're now 25% brighter than the 6S and 6S Plus. For the first time, they display wide color gamut, that's cinema P3 standard colors. And we do end-to-end -end color management, from the manufacturing the factory, to the photos you take with the camera, to what you see on the display, are all color managed in a beautiful way. And don't forget, we integrate within the Retina HD display our 3D touch layer. This is an important element of the user interface. And in iOS 10, the team has taken great use of this, so we're gonna use it more throughout our day in very powerful ways. So we wanted to show you one example of an app taking advantage of all of this, taking advantage of the Retina HD display and its wide color, of the cameras built in iPhone 7, and of course, 3D touch. We wanna show you a photo app, and who knows photos and apps better than Instagram? So I'm very excited to bring up Ian Spalter, Head of Design at Instagram. Ian. Thanks, Phil. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to share with you what we built to take advantage of this new iPhone's gorgeous wide color screen and dual lens camera. About a month ago, we launched a new product called Instagram Stories. And we've seen people sharing moments ranging from their everyday lives to behind the scenes at the Olympics. So let's jump into the Stories camera using a new 3D Touch quick action. Now the first thing we love about this new iPhone is this beautiful zoom that goes optically to 2x without losing any resolution. We built a new zoom UI with haptic feedback so you can really feel when you push into that digital zoom. But now let's take a photo. Thank you. Check out how bright and vivid the colors are thanks to the new wide color capture of the new camera. So, photos don't always capture the moment fully, 
So with the tap of a button, we use the Live Photos API to quickly create a boomerang to bring the moment to life. You can also import your existing live photos to do the same thing. Now this is awesome, but we wanted to go a step further and really take full advantage of this wide color ga gamut screen. So we built a new filter to do just that by pushing into parts of the color spectrum that just weren't possible with sRGB. So with this new filter, you can see colors pop in a way that you've never seen before. In fact, we've updated all of our photo filters to take advantage of wide gamut. So no matter what your favorite filter is, you're going to be experiencing all of your Instagram photos in full, vibrant color. And finally, once you're happy with what you've created, you can share the moment with friends with a single tap. And then if one of them replies, our iOS 10 rich notifications show you the image right there in the push notification. So this new version of Instagram will be launching later this year, and we're really excited to see what you all create with Instagram and the new iPhone. Thank you. Six. Let's talk about audio. First, we use the built-in speaker in our iPhone all the time. We use it to listen to music, especially with friends. We listen to it to make FaceTime calls, watch TV shows, watch movies, do speaker phone calls. It is critical to our experience with our phones. And the speakers we have built in to iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are a huge jump forward in audio quality. The first time, they're stereo speakers. One is at the bottom, the other is the top. They sound great in portrait and amazing in landscape. They also put out twice the volume of the speakers in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, and they sound better because they have an increased dynamic range. So you have to take a listen to these incredible speakers. They really will blow you away. Number seven, ear pods. Apple ear pods are the most popular headphones in the world. And with iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, we're moving to connecting them over lightning. Well, why over lightning? Well, first, you may not remember, I certainly do, but from the start, we designed lightning to be a great digital audio connector. Among all the other things it does, it provides a digital audio stream, it provides power to your headphones or speakers, it provides content music control right within its digital connection. And this may surprise you, but there are now in the world over 900 million lightning-enabled devices. It is perhaps the largest digital audio connection in the world. And there are speakers and headphones designed to take advantage of it, and they do great things. Here's one example. This is from JBL. This is the Reflect Aware workout headphone. It's lightweight, it's affordable, provides active noise cancellation. In fact, with an app on your iPhone, it's adaptive, and you can adjust how much exterior noise you want to let in or not. And it does it all without batteries and charging because it works directly over that lightning connector. Simply not possible on just an analog port. So we're taking the headphones and iPhone 7 and 7 Plus to lightning, and we're including them in the box with each device. Now we know there are people in the world who do have some analog old connected devices out there. So we've also made this. It's an adapter, lightning to mini phono audio adapter. And we're going to include that in the box with every iPhone 7 and 7 Plus as well. Now, some people have asked why we would remove the analog headphone jack from the iPhone. I mean, it's been with us a really long time. I'm sure you know that the the source of this phono, mini phono jack is over 100 years old, used to help quickly exchange and switch boards. Well, the reason to move on, I'm going to give you three of them, but it really comes down to one word, courage. The courage to move on, do something new that betters all of us. And our team has tremendous courage. So first, we've shown that we can use lightning for our inbox headphones and to adapt all, to the, all, the, all the older devices through analog interfaces. And it is a great connector for doing that, and there's a very large base of users who can all take advantage of it. But second, and this is really important, our smartphones are packed with technologies, and we all want more. We want 
bigger, dis brighter displays. We want larger batteries. We want faster processors. We want stereo speakers. We want taptic engines. We want all of that. And it's all fighting for space within that same enclosure. And maintaining an ancient single purpose analog big connector doesn't make sense because that space is at a premium. And third, and I think this is most important of all, when you have a vision of how audio, the audio experience can be, you want to get there as fast as you can and make it as great as it can be. And we do have a vision for how audio should work on mobile devices. And that takes us to our next feature, wireless. Up till now, no one has taken on the challenge to really deliver the audio experience wirelessly between your mobile device and your headphones in a way that takes advantage of the opportunities to do something new and do something great. And up till now, no one has taken on the challenge of fixing the things that are difficult to do in those wireless experiences and made it easy so that we all want to enjoy them. And it makes no sense to tether ourselves with cables to our mobile devices. But until someone takes on these challenges, that's what we do. Well, our team at Apple has worked so hard to create something new that delivers on the opportunity of how good a wireless experience can be. And they've worked hard to deal with the challenges that have been left there and no one has taken on. So that is why today we are so excited to show you a new product from Apple called Apple AirPods. And here they are. We believe in a wireless future. A future where all of your devices intuitively connect. This belief drove the design of our new wireless AirPods. They have been made possible with the development of the new Apple Design W1 chip. It is the first of its kind to produce intelligent, high-efficiency playback while delivering a consistent and reliable connection. Infrared sensors detect when each AirPod is in your ear, so they only play once you're ready to listen. Motion accelerometers also respond to your touch, allowing you to access Siri with a double tap. When you're speaking, voice accelerometers recognize the vibration and source of your voice. Then, working with a pair of beam-forming microphones, reduce external noise. Each AirPod provides up to five hours of listening on a single charge, while the compact wireless charging case delivers more than 24 hours of battery life. The W1 chip enables intelligent connection to all your Apple devices and allows you to instantly switch between whichever one you're using. And of course, the new wireless AirPods deliver incredible sound. We're just at the beginning of a truly wireless future we've been working towards for many years, where technology enables the seamless and automatic connection between you and your devices. Congratulations to the team that has worked so hard on this. It is a breakthrough design. The AirPods deliver truly an Apple magical experience. When you try it, you're just going to be blown away. How do you set them up? You simply put a pair of AirPods near your iPhone and open the case. The user interface pops up and says connect, and you tap connect, and that's it. There's no step two, there's nothing else to do, you simply connect. And that one step also connects you with your Apple Watch. So you're automatically set up for both your iPhone and your Apple Watch. You can start listening. And as you have playback on either device, the AirPods automatically switch to whatever device you're using. In fact, we also use iCloud to propagate that setup across your iPads and your Macs as well. So one step set up across all your devices. 
It's that easy. They're an incredible audio experience. You can listen to beautiful music in stereo, or if you want to use one just to talk to Siri or make a phone call, it automatically routes the audio across whatever you choose to do. There's no buttons, there's no switching, there's no pairing, there's no unpairing. Those things are of the past. And it all started with a brand new chip, the W1 chip, Apple's first wireless chip. And there's so much technology packed into each AirPod. There's the chip, there's dual accelerometers, optical sensors, beam-forming microphones, antennas, batteries. It is a technical tour de force in this minute little AirPod. They deliver great battery life, five hours each. And there's a battery and charger built into its case. So you can recharge directly from the battery in the case for up to 24 hours of listening. And then plug in lightning once you want to charge the case and the AirPods together at once. And they're so small, you want to carry them around with you everywhere. Here they are alongside our wired ear pods. They really are small and comfortable. So that is the breakthrough ear pods. Based on our W1 chip, and at the same time, Beats is also coming out with a new line of headphones, all also taking advantage of this W1 chip and doing the same great work with our software to make the experience easy to use. So today, Beats is launching the new Beats Solo 3 Wireless. Incredible audio quality to 40 hours of listening time using that W1 chip. And for workouts, Beats, Power Beats 3 Wireless, the best active headphones, and now they use our W1 chip as well for incredible sound and battery life. And an entirely new line, Beats X. This is an affordable, light, comfortable headphone for all throughout your day. Those three plus the new AirPods mean there's now a brand new wireless experience for everyone, regardless of what kind of style of headphone you want to wear. And that's wireless. <laughs> nice. Let's talk about Apple Pay. Our customers love using Apple Pay. And, and this is amazing. In the US, merchants tell us that over 90% of wireless transactions on contactless payment are now made with Apple Pay. It is a huge hit. And with the advances in iOS 10, it gets even easier to keep all your credit cards, your loyalty cards safely in your Apple wallet on your iPhone. We're trying to bring it around the world as quickly as we can, and the team is launching new countries this fall. I want to talk about one of them, Japan. Yeah, we got a who right out here, Japan. You may know that in Japan, they use a different version of NFC called Felica. So for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus that we're bringing to Japan, we're including Felica technology, as well as Apple Watch Series 2 will also include Felica technology. And with that in place, then we can roll out Apple Pay in Japan. And we're going to do that in October. At the same time, the Apple Maps team is going to roll out Transit in Japan, as that's the perfect fit. Transit and Maps, the ability to figure out what it's going to cost to get on your route and to be able to pay it automatically with your Apple Watch or your iPhone. So that's Apple Pay. And that takes us to number 10. And honestly, uh, I'm almost embarrassed that we had this one to the last because this easily could have been the first. It is performance. And if you're paying attention, you know Apple's chip team is killing it in performance. What they're doing year after year is remarkable. Every year, the iPhone is the fastest smartphone in the market, and that's continued even to this day. But what we're hap what's happening today with iPhone 7 and 7 Plus blows that all away, because we have a new generation chip in the iPhone 7, and it's called A10 Fusion. A10 Fusion is a 64-bit, four-core processor with over 3.3 billion transistors. It is a rocket ship. First, it has two cores that are high-performance cores. These high-performance cores run a full 40% faster than the A9 chip in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. And if you're coming from an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, it's twice as fast than the A8. Here's what the team has been doing over the years. 
The A10 Fusion is now 120 times faster than the original iPhone. And look at the last three years, from the 5S to the 6, the 6 to the 6S to now the 7, the jumps in performance are just staggering. I said there were four cores. The other two are what we call high efficiency cores. They run at one-fifth the power of the high performance core. So when you're doing something that isn't performance limited by the CPU, like checking your email, that can run on the high efficiency core and get longer battery life. So how do we decide what runs on which core? There's a new Apple-designed performance controller that in real time makes sure the correct processes are running for maximum performance or maximum battery life. In addition, we've got amazing graphics in the A10. It's a new GPU, it's a six-core graphics chip that is 50% faster than the A9 and three times faster than the A8. This is remarkable, and it does it again with efficiency in mind. Two thirds the power of the A9, half the power of the A8 at graphics. I've got to bring this chart up as well. 240 times faster than the original iPhone. The graphics performance year over year here is staggering. You combine the CPU performance, the graphics performance all running efficiently, and there is absolutely no question, A10 Fusion is the most powerful chip ever in a smartphone. More importantly for all of us, A10 Fusion is going to enable apps and titles that were simply not possible in mobile devices before. For example, games. This is from Codemasters. It's a new racing game, F1 2016. This is console-level gaming on an iPhone because of A10. It takes advantage of the GPU. It also delivers graphics that use the wide color gamut of the display. It takes advantage of the stereo speakers and utilizes the Taptic engine for new level of feel when you're driving. This is a breakthrough racing game running on iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Pro apps benefit as well. This is Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom running on A10 Fusion delivers 90% of the features for raw editing of the desktop version. I mean, that's incredible. Adobe Lightroom on a phone in your pocket doing raw editing. It's simply incredible. But we want to give you one example of a game running live on the A10 Fusion to show you what it's capable of. So I'm very excited to bring up Heather Price, co-founder of This Game Studio. Heather?